to visit Darrow and Broadway. Yeah. Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi had a historic opportunity last January when she became the first woman and first Californian to be Speaker of the House. She could have joined with her sister California Congresswomen, Barbara Lee, Lynn Woolsey, and Maxine Waters, to build a consensus in Congress to fully fund the withdrawal of U.S. troops by December 2007. Congresswoman Pelosi could have used her political capital to line up support for a simple message. Congress won't buy Bush's war. She could have changed the terms of the debate on the war. Instead of acting defensively, she could have asked this question of her Republican and even some Democratic colleagues. Why do you still support this criminal war for oil profits? Congresswoman Pelosi might or might not have gotten a majority of the House of Representatives to use the power of the purse strings to cut funding to war profiteers such as Halliburton and Blackwater and to end the war this year. But she could have tried. When asked about the coat pinkers camping in front of her Pacific Heights home, Congresswoman Pelosi oh, said for the newspapers, bless their hearts. With regret and disappointment, we coat pinkers respond, where is your heart? How can you advocate for an unacceptable appropriation for more war in Iraq. Congresswoman Pelosi must have left her heart in San Francisco and not taken it with her to the insider closed door meetings in Washington, D.C. after last November's election, the mandate for peace. We still call upon Congresswoman Pelosi to represent her progressive pro-peace district and to support the Barbara Lee Amendment to the Supplemental for a fully funded withdrawal. She still has a historic opportunity to end this illegal, immoral war. Code Pink says, bring the troops home. Bring the troops home. Bring the troops home. Bring the troops home. Bring the troops home alive now. 2008 is much too late. Thank you, Janet Weil. Hello, my name is Toby Blomay, and I'm one of the organizers of Camp Pelosi. This is Leslie. She's been a trooper. The two of us have been holding Camp Pelosi for 10 evenings now, between the two of us, and tons of support from Code Pink and other uh, people in the neighborhood have dropped out food and water. And Camp Pelosi started 10 days ago because we are women and men who have been lobbying Nancy Pelosi's office for over a month now, dozens of people coming in weekly to call on Nancy and urge her to not fund this war anymore. Her staff says that Nancy does not have any time to meet with us for three months, but we feel our country is facing a crisis right now. We're posturing to go into Iran we don't want the war to escalate, we want the troops to come home. And so, because we've been working so hard for peace, and as all of you know, we've been, thousands of people have been trying to end this war for four years. We've done tons of different things. We've done had weekly vigils in communities all across the country. We've had peace marches regularly, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands marching for peace. Thousands of citizens writing letters, making phone calls, calling our Congress in this war. Petitions that we've delivered to the White House and to Congress. Military families delivering letters. Even the troops now have called for Congress to stop funding the war. There's been an organized group of truth servicemen, as some of you know. We don't know what else to do to get our Congress to bring us to peace. But we are desperate because we're tired of the suffering of the war both in Iraq and our poor soldiers who are not giving decent care. We're tired of the brain injuries 
and the amputations and you know all else. And so we have run out of ideas and we decided we marched from the bridge a week ago on Sunday and landed at Camp Pelosi's and we only thought we were going to be there one day and Leslie and I together with support of lots of people in San Francisco have kept the camp going for over a week now and we need the community to keep coming and helping us support it. We're going to be there until the funding vote, the appropriations bill is voted on and when uh, Nancy makes her vote, if it's a yes, we're going to have a civil disobedience at 6 o'clock the day after the vote and we welcome all citizens to come and witness Americans that are willing to put their bodies on the line and say we don't want this war to continue. So on Broadway between Divisadir and Scott at 6 o'clock the day after the voting happens, we want you guys all to come down and support us. Um, so thank you for the time and come visit Camp Pelosi. Uh, it's a beautiful little camp on the corner right in front of Nancy Pelosi's house, 2640 Broadway. And here's Leslie, she wants to say a few words. Hello, um, yes, please come to Camp Pelosi. And um, I started being very active last year um, with a hunger strike, the Troops Home Fast. I fasted 25 days. I've been to Washington, D.C. twice in the last six months. And we've been to this office trying to get a, a, an appointment with um, Pelosi, and we were unable to, so that's why we're in front of her home. But I'd much rather be home in Marin, in my little sweet home. So please, let's end this war. Thank you. No money for war. Thank you, troopers at Camp Pelosi. Um, I'd like to introduce someone I've been working with for the past, I think, over a year now. Declaration of Peace is a group that has been put together by several um, anti-war or pro-peace groups. And today we have Kathy Liskam to share a few words with us. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for the press that showed up. We really appreciate it. My greatest fear is that uh, Speaker Pelosi is colluding with the Bush administration in a deep way here. I wish that she were knocking together the heads of the Blue Dog Democrats to vote for uh, Congressman Lee's amendment rather than putting such heavy pressure among the, uh, on the stalwarts like Lee and Maxine Waters and Lynn Woolsey, those heroines of ours. The problem is it looks like the United States is going to be in Iraq for a very long time. And the Democrats are either agreeing that this should happen, or they're not moving fast enough to end the war today, tomorrow, next month. As we speak, there is an oil law written by the State Department and the International Monetary Fund that's before the Iraqi parliament that would effectively privatize most of their oil, which has been nationalized since the mid-70s. There are also, this would open the way, the doors for Exxon, Chevron, BP, Mobil, and the rest of the multinationals to really plunder the Iraqi oil. This is not mentioned in the Chronicle. It's really under the radar in the US press. The Democrats have not spoken to it, but certainly they must know what's going on. Also, there are 14 huge military bases in Iraq the largest U.S. embassy in the world is being built there. And so for the Democrats to dither, you know, and to drag their feet on this is really unconscionable, unless some of them are in collusion with the Bush administration and believe that we should be the superpower in the Middle East. So we really have to fight, brothers and sisters, people of this country. It's patriotic to resist with all of our being this war. Thank you very much.